everyone, it's Sevi. Best Wolf Boy Razor is one of Genshin's OG physical carries who is still a fun 4-star character to use even now if you're in need of a DPS, and if you like canines. In this video, we're going to learn more about Razor's talents and kit, gameplay tips, constellations, artifact builds, best weapons, and team comps to hopefully make you a responsible pet owner. With that being said, Razor Guide, start now. Razor is an on-field hyper carry, so let's start with his biggest damage source, normal attacks. This is a 4-hit combo with fairly high multipliers among Claymore users. They can feel a bit slow, and you'll need to be careful that he won't get interrupted or staggered during the attack animations, especially the 4th hit. Jump or dash cancelling his attacks, usually during the 3rd or 4th animation, is a handy tech to practice, and his 4th hit can knock back light enemies, causing you to have to dash towards them to continue your attacks. Aside from dash cancelling, you can also use his skill to cancel the attack animations. His Claymore attacks also have a small AoE, so attacking enemies when they're grouped together is a much more efficient strategy. Razor's burst is where he transforms into the hyper carry he's meant to be. Upon entering it, he gains the following effects. The most important of these is that his normal attack speed is increased by a lot, making him feel unstoppable. Completing the entire 4-hit combo also becomes more worth it in this case. Razor also summons an Electro Wolf, attacking simultaneously to deal Electro damage. But since Razor is built as a physical DPS, the Wolf isn't meant to do as big Electro damage numbers. Rather, its main purpose is Electro application and just adding more to Razor's overall DPS. However, Razor is still quite vulnerable. If you're not careful, you might end up with a dead Wolf Boy, which is why dodging, shielding, or healing are key to keeping our dog alive. Its indicated duration is 15 seconds, but it can actually last longer in practice due to a phenomenon called hit lag. I'll put a link in the description that you can check out later to better understand this. During his burst, he also applies Electro on himself periodically. This creates a self-cleansing mechanic that gets rid of unwanted elemental debuffs. But also, if Razor is infused with Pyro, then it creates an overload reaction which may have an inconvenient effect of knocking back small enemies. If he's infused with Cryo, it creates a superconduct reaction. Switching out Razor unfortunately ends the burst form instantly. This is why you want to ensure that all your party members have fully set up their abilities to let Razor bash away as long as needed without needing to switch to someone else. And it's also why his role is that of a so-called selfish DPS. However, you don't necessarily have to finish the entire burst duration for various reasons. You may have to start your rotation, set up your sub DPS abilities again, or make an emergency retreat. There's even even an effect that if you switch Razor out with some remaining duration, you can refund a bit of energy. Speaking of energy, Razor's burst has a high energy cost of 80. So the next concern is how to fill up that cost, which brings me to his skill talent. Razor's skill has two modes, press and hold. Pressing it makes Razor deal electro damage in front of him and generate three energy particles upon hit. However, it's important to remember that if he's in his burst form, no particles will be generated. Furthermore, pressing it creates an Electro Sigil for Razor up to a maximum of 3 Sigils. Each Sigil gives Razor plus 20% energy recharge, thereby helping him get back more energy from particles or orbs that he catches. Team batteries are also helpful so that Razor has more sources of particles and the ER buff he gives himself will help bring back his burst faster. Due to the long animation though, it's also recommended to do a dash cancel as soon as it hits the enemy to avoid wasting time and being vulnerable to enemy stagger attacks. The press skill has a shorter cooldown than the hold and you should generally press it whenever it's ready or to use it as a way to cancel your attack animation. Holding this skill then makes Razor do higher electro damage in an AoE and it consumes all the sigils you've generated thus far. Each sigil consumed will get back 5 energy for Razor for a maximum of 15 energy from 3 sigils. Note that this refunded energy is not affected by Razor's ER stat, rather it's a flat energy gain. Casting the burst also consumes the electro sigil similar to the hold skill. 
So when do you press or hold Razor skill? For me, press skill is almost always used. At the start of a battle, immediately use Razor's press skill to get a sigil. And while Razor isn't in his burst form, press skill only so that you can get sigils, generate particles, or boost his ER. During his burst form, you should generally do press skills, since even though you're not generating particles, you are at least stacking sigils and boosting his ER to increase the value of particles generated from defeating enemies or your team batteries. There are other scenarios where using the hold skill could be a good idea. If you need a sudden burst of energy gain to fill up your energy cost. If you have a lot of surrounding enemies, the hold skill does AoE damage. If you're trying to break a Geo or Cryo shield, the hold skill counts as a heavy electro attack, allowing you to break them faster. Note also that his hold skill has a longer cooldown, so it's better used right before his burst which resets the skill cooldown. Ultimately, you can create your own rhythm or rotation of mixing Razor's press and hold skills. Combining Razor's normal attacks with his skill and energy mechanics is key to making Razor do as much DPS as possible during his wolf form. Finally, let's just quickly look at his other passive talents. The first one, Awakening, reduces his skill cooldowns and makes it reset if you use his burst, making them even more spammable. The second talent, Hunger, gives him even more ER, making his energy generation all the better. The third one, Wolven Sprint, reduces the stamina cost of sprinting. This is very important not just for exploration, but since his combos involve a lot of dash cancelling. The reduced stamina cost enables his fast and smooth playstyle. As for his talent levels, the normal attacks should be your priority. Then follow it up with his burst, at least up to level 9. Then his skill should be leveled up at least to level 6. But if you have him on C4 onwards, it's good to level it up more as its damage contribution becomes more significant. Now let's take a look at Razor's constellations. While these aren't necessary to play Razor well, they do improve his DPS abilities quite nicely. C1 gives Razor a 10% damage bonus bump that you can treat as being on all the time since he'll likely pick up particles or orbs often enough to constantly refresh this effect. What's great is that it affects both his electro and physical damage. C2 is another damage bump in the form of increased crit rate against enemies with 30% or lower HP. Good for making Razor kill enemies faster once they're weak enough. C3 increases his burst level by 3, which makes your wolf deal more damage and increases Razor's attack speed. C4 is no doubt his best constellation as using his skill, not the hold skill, shreds the enemy's defense by 15%. This defense shred can also be taken advantage of by your teammates, and considering that you should press his skill often, then it will have consistent uptime. It's also another reason to open your battles with Razor's skill, so your other units can already take advantage of the defense shred. C5 increases his skill level by 3, which makes his skill do larger damage contribution. And finally, C6 gives Razor electro damage every 10 seconds, which is procced by doing a normal attack. Since Razor isn't built for electro damage, the damage will be relatively lower. But the bigger benefit, I think, is that procking this when he does a normal attack during his non burst state makes him get another sigil, which translates to better energy management. That's why you should proc this with a normal attack if you don't have max sigils yet before activating his burst. Now let's discuss the various full artifact sets and combos Razor can equip. Razor's low AR artifacts are anything that increases his offensive stats. These are the two-piece attack sets, Berserkers for the crit, and Martial Artist for the normal attack damage bonus. Then for his endgame sets, you have a lot of options. First of all, I would say that his best set is a 4-piece Gladiator's Finale. While you may say that it doesn't have the highest damage ceiling compared to a 4-piece Pale Flame, which is true, the damage difference versus isn't that big and can be equalized by having good substats. But more importantly, you can just strongbox the pieces while you farm for other characters and passively get Glad artifacts from boss drops. It's that combination of farming convenience and great damage that makes this set the best for me. The other best option is indeed the 4-piece Pale Flame set, which has a slightly higher damage ceiling than a Gladiator's Finale. Razor can also keep up the 4-piece effect consistently since his skill cooldown is short enough. 
I wouldn't recommend you use resin to target farming pale flame pieces solely for razor, unless you also happen to want tenacity pieces. The pale flame set is also much better than Shimanawa since you get essentially the same buff without having Shimanawa's energy eating mechanics. Otherwise, combos of 2 piece physical and or 2 piece attack percent sets will work. Go with whatever combo gives you the best substats. While these aren't highly recommended, I would mention the 4 piece retracing bolide, which boosts shields on Razor, thus improving his survivability. There's also the 4 piece Thunder Soother, which in theory is Razor's best set, since the damage bonus affects all his damage sources. However, it's only really viable in a niche electrocharge comp, and you shouldn't deliberately farm the set for him. For the main stats, target crit, physical damage, and attack percent. You can also use a temporary attack percent goblet on him if you don't have a decent physical damage piece or even one at all. As for Razor's ER, what's great is he can add up to 60% to his own energy recharge and self-generate energy. You'll only be getting extra ER from substats and 120% should generally be enough. This can also go lower to none at all if you have battery teammates or Favonius holders in your team. Now let's proceed with his best weapons, which have a good selection for spenders, gamblers, and free-to-plays. I'll start off with Razor's best weapons. The Wolf's Gravestone is his OG best in slot and still one of his top weapons now. It's close in damage output with the Unforged, which is why I'd say they're of similar value. The Song of Broken Pines is also a very comparable alternative to the Wolf's Gravestone if you manage to pull one, though I wouldn't recommend pulling it only for Razor. The Redhorn Stone Thresher is the latest Claymore added with good Razor synergy and damage that's at par with fellow 5 stars. It also somewhat improves Razor's survivability, which is one of his potential issues, by adding more defense, and at least your stray defense rolls become less copium. Finally, the Serpent Spine is the best 4 star weapon and at high refinements is able to compete with 5 stars. While it lets you build crit damage and adds a high damage bonus that affects both physical and electro damage, it has a low base attack. So it's highly recommended to use teammates that can buff Razor's attack or Yunjin to balance it out. If you have high or max refinements, you can even use an attack percent goblet instead. Too much damage bonus stacking from the weapon, his artifacts, and even his ascension stat results in a lot of diminishing returns. And his electro damage scales from that attack percent goblet as well. You also need to be conscious of shielding and dodging as the weapon increases the damage Razor takes, which is mitigated with higher refinements at least. The two free-to-play options are basically Prototype Archaic and Snow Tombed Star Silver. These two are so close in damage output that it's negligible in practice. If you have an aesthetic preference, then go ahead. What I would recommend though is the Prototype Archaic, mainly because if you manage to replace Razor's weapon, the Prototype Archaic can be used more universally while the Star Silver is only limited to physical units. The Star Silver Icicle is also more likely to miss due to Razor's knockback. There's also the Black Cliff Slasher, but sticking to the prototype Archaic instead offers a more reliable experience than Black Cliff Slasher's conditional stacking effect. At zero stacks, it's worse than Archaic and only slightly better at full stacks. More importantly, I don't think the Star Glitter is worth spending for this and you should instead use it for other purposes such as getting characters or constellations you don't have yet. Two more honorable mentions for Razor's best weapons. The Skyward Pride provides more than enough of Razor's ER needs, allowing you to completely focus on offensive substats. It also has an effect that adds additional damage over time, which scales on physical damage perfect for Razor. If you're using Skyward Pride, it's recommended to use physical damage sets as normal attack damage bonus does not affect the Skyward's damage over time effect. The Lithic Blade is also a decent upgrade to the free-to-play options, though you'll have to pair him with Leo characters to maximize its passive. Razor needs friends. When it comes to team comps, Razor's teams will have Razor, a Cryo, and two flex slots that depend on your available built characters and preferences. Let's start with Cryo, which is a must-have to trigger Superconduct for Razor. There's Rosaria, the best Cryo sub DPS and support for giving crit rate, doing periodic Cryo damage, and if you have her C6, she even shreds physical resistance. She can also be your Noblesse holder if no one else on the team is. 
While having fewer support utilities than Rosaria, Kaya is still a good alternative that does the job of setting up Superconduct. It's also helpful that his burst follows Razor around to help with Superconduct procs. Diona is great for her shield and healing to ensure Razor survives, and Chi Chi is a workable option as long as you can fulfill her high ER cost. And while she doesn't shield, her healing is a lot and follows Razor. Even better, if she's holding an ocean hued clam set, then you now have an off field sub DPS doing physical damage too. All of them can hold a Favonius weapon for added battery utility. Once you have a cryo teammate, you can now have flexibility in choosing the other two teammates to act as sub DPS or supports for Razor. There's Fischl, who also batteries and unlocks electro resonance. There's Sing Cho, who can do electro charge with Razor while giving him rain sword protection and a bit of healing. And if also paired with a cryo, you can do a freeze shatter team, which is effective on small enemy mobs. Sin Yan offers shielding, physical damage bonus, and physical resistance shred at C4, and can also be your team's physical sub DPS if she has an invested DPS build. However, her shield may be too weak to reliably protect Razor, plus it might do overload reactions that inconveniently knock back enemies. Bennett is a great support, but in Razor's case, the pairing has some potential issues. Since Razor is prone to knocking back enemies, it might cause you to have to chase them away outside Bennett's circle. This is worsened since Bennett's pyro self-infusion and Razor's electro self-infusion cause an overload reaction which also knocks back enemies. But if the enemy is immovable, then Bennett becomes much more viable. But if you have C6 Bennett, then you can forget it, unless Pyro Razor is your thing. Yunjin is a very good damage buffer to Razor's normal attack playstyle, and while she can't heal like Bennett or buff his attack stat directly, she has one significant edge over Bennett's buff, which is that it follows Razor around. It's also better if Razor is up against at least two enemies so he can use all of Yunjin's triggers. And finally, Zhongli is simply the best protection for the best boy. His shield utility is especially priceless if using Razor with a Serpent Spine or Unforged. And that's it for this Razor guide. Build Razor. Razor ready. Razor fight. I hope you can raise your wolf boy with lots of love or at least with a nice build. Comment down below if Razor is your best boy or how you like to team comp him. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!